Hello everyone, I am going to make a presentation on Introduction to Safety Requirement Specifications SRS. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe to the channel. Safety Requirements Specification Introduction SRS This details the entire steps being followed in safety instrumented system life cycle. SRS describes the entire steps being followed in a safety instrumented system life cycle. SRS form gives full view of the SIS design, configuration of sensors, logic solver and final control element and which discipline to be responsible for what kind of action etc. So this details all the requirements and the multiple disciplines being involved in using the safety instrumented system and their inputs and actions required and those are detailed in the SRS forms. International standards IEC 61511-1 details the requirements of SRS. So we will just continue about the SRS requirements. The IEC 61511 standard requires the user to create a safety requirement specification for a safety instrumented system that incorporates all the analysis done during the risk anal assessment as a PHA and low power abuse. HAZAP stands for hazardous operability, PHA stands for process hazard analysis and low power stands for layer of protection analysis. So the SRS has to be developed based on the study of HASAP, PHA and low power. This will be done during the initial conceptual design engineering stages of the project. Sir. The SRS falls into two types. And Initial conceptual SRS often referred to as process safety SRS. The process safety engineers along with the plant uh, operation engineers or the plant designers that means licensors who are involved in the process design they will sit together along with the automation or instrumentation discipline maintenance discipline and then prepare a SRS and a detailed design SRS which contains all the detailed information. The detail means conceptual means they will go into the basics based on which scenario, what uh, action has to be done, what is the possibility of initiating event and what is the possibility of uh, in the different protection layer being protecting the particular scenario. So based on these details, the initial conceptual SRS will be formed, will be developed and then the second step, the detailed design SRS which contain all the design information. There the inputs about the type of uh, logic cell or type of sensor, type of final control elements and process safety time, seat leakage rate, uh, like that many inputs are all there. Those things will be updated in the second step. SRS form is a detailed excel sheet containing complete information of the SIS applicable for the particular project. For any project involving SIS shall form a team from production leader, HSE leader of the respective plan together with the certified safety instrumented system coaches along with the design lead, represent maintenance representatives and a technology center expert who is well versed with the plant operations. Here HSE stands for health safety and environment. Each process industry they will be having on HSA department which is known as health safety and environment. They are the one responsible for the safety of the plant and as well as the employee safety and uh, any visitors because arriving at the plant and leaving the plant, their safety, everything has to be controlled by this team. So this is the team formed to prepare an SRS form. Information shall contain complete SIS life cycle study, major points per below details. So what are the things that are available in the SRS form? This is SIS design information, SIS verification, SIS validation and commissioning, reviews and approvals, different disciplines are involved in this step, SIS registration, documentation in plant library. So these are the multiple steps being available and has to be inputted while developing the SRS form. Safety requirement specification form shall be the basic document for design, installation and commissioning of the SIS loops. This SRS form shall be part of the engineering deliverable for all the projects which involves new addition of SIS safety instrumented system or modification of any existing SIS loops across the plant. Actually the SRS is required for all the safety instrumented system available across the plant in different subsections of the plant 
and as and when any existing facility being upgraded with a new safety interpreter system loop so in those cases also srs form has to be filled srs form shall consist of various sections section 1 to 12 and each section shall be updated by different personnel involved or different personnel identified of identified role profile per plant manager and department leader so the section 1 to 12 has to be done by different disciplines however it is mandatory that updation of different sections of the srs form shall be carried out in sequence like section 1 2 3 up to 12 it has to go in a sequence so that all the relevant information needed for the safety interpreter system and to maintain its healthiness and to maintain the life cycle will be detailed over there in the srs form here we are seeing one sample of srs form so what are the things it's there sif identification and references hazard and risk assessment and process details and there are other sections also due to the space limitation i have just briefed the quick sample a part of the srs form it looks similar to this one so in the sif identification and references uh, first point will be sif name and number so the unique name or tag number of the sif will be inputted over here that could be sif 001 sif 00 2 or sif a01 a02 this is according to the plant documentation philosophy and the documentation date the date of creation of srs division any revisions being updated it has to be input here sif description the describe how the sif should work its function and how it will prevent a dangerous scenario to develop how it can prevent a dangerous scenario that has to be inputted over here pnid piping and instrumentation diagram reference that has to be inputted here in this field H and R A reference. This is hazard and risk analysis reference. From the this is to be available from the PHA process hazard analysis document. And other references, any other relevant references which is relevant to the particular shift can be in, included over here. And the next part, this hazard and risk assessment. Here, the hazardous event has to be described. Describe the hazardous event for which the shift is needed. This can be from your process hazard analysis like. as up and lopa these are the two different tools so the input on this field can be from one of this the safe state of the process over here in this field and expect a demand right how often this scenario will develop if there are any no safeguarding safeguards present so that will be inputted over here how much time it is expected to happen and the process details process safety time this is a field they have to mention for each hazardous event or something what could be the safety time to recover back to the normal sea assumptions and calculations define the period of time between a failure occurring in the system and the occurrence of the hazardous event if the safety function is not performed so if the safety did not come into picture the hazard can get on spending if the particular protection here did not act and bring back the process to the normal condition to the safe operating limit it exits to the next level and the next layer of protection will come into picture the next layer also having some issue it further expresses to the further next level like that it can expand so that details which is the possibility of the next level protection has to be described over here allowable leakage depth of valves we are going to talk about the final control limits valves those valves need to have a leakage rate this is they can allow only certain amount of liquid or gas as per the sea tightness conditions that has to be inputted over inputted over here here again the assumptions and calculations if any has to be mentioned define the maximum flow that can leak by a valve used as a final limit so these are the part of the srs form and there are multiple sections involving the design specification type of sensors leakage rate etc etc so all these things has to be inputted it is an excel sheet type of a template okay srs in detail as in any requirement specification it is essential to ensure that the sys design information is properly conveyed to the designer and avoid any potential for misinterpretation of the requirements so all the details necessary for developing this srs has to be conveyed to the designer designer who is involved in the design of the project or particular system that has to be conveyed so that all de details will be inputted properly without any error as far as possible avoid jargon and or three letter acronyms three letter three letter acronyms is another requirement 
in the safety instrumented system sis is a, it's a, itself an acronym for safety instrumented system pfd stands for probability of failure and demand sil stands for safety integrity level hri stands for hazard risk analysis and mtf stands for mean time to fail like that many acronyms are there that has to be clearly described tls are tls three letter acronym are used there could be somewhere some four letter acronyms also there but in general most of them are three letter acronyms they are used then a glossary of terms should be included to assist in comprehension another very important requirement is that the quality of the document shall be in such a way that reader can efficiently understand and extract the information whoever is going to go through the document can easily understand and extract the required information so that is also a vital factor iec 61511 standard is a performance based standard that is all about the performance of the sis and reducing risk so it is very clear about what SRS should contain. All the requirements for safety instrumented system and its associated safety instrumented function. So, the specification should contain all the requirements about the safety instrumented system and the relevant safety instrumented function which is going to perform. It should be remembered that the SIS consists of one or more safety instrumented functions which can consist of a combination of sensor, logic solver and final control elements including all interfaces and sources of power. So, the SRS needs to define two sets of criteria for each safer. There are multiple safety instrumented functions involved in some plants. So, which may same have sensors, logic solvers and final elements. So, all the details have to be clearly marked. So, the set of functional requirements we see. Set of functional requirements and a set of integrated requirements. This is what the two sets of criteria for each SIF we have mentioned within the from the previous slide one is set of functional requirements and second is set of integrity requirements which mentions about the safety integrity level target etc indicating the amount of risk reduction required to be achieved so the which is a measure of the dependability so this should indicate the sill level required sill level required determines the amount of dependability whenever any assets in here happening and uh, the safety instrument system are involved to do the mitigation, protect that hazard scenario. So, how much can be de dependable? That is to be mentioned over here. Importance of SRS. So, now we understand about the SRS requirement. What is SRS and SRS requirement and uh, SRS forms in brief and what are the inputs and who are the participants involved in the SRS, in developing the SRS, like a conceptual SRS and detailed design SRS. Those things have been seen and uh, different uh, requirements of inputting the relevant information from the ASAP or PHA, ASAP study and uh, PHA and LOPA study has been described. And now in this slide, we are going to see the importance or criticality of SRS. So, for each standard, each specification, there are multiple requirements and uh, needs. So, one need to understand why it is important or critical so that the applicability can be well understood. The UK's Health and Safety Executive conducted a study in 2015, this is a bit longer ago, but anyway, this is data available regarding the accident causes involving control systems and concluded that 44% of the causes were led to specification issues. So, the, the team has studied the different kinds of hazards and accidents wherever it had happened and came out with a decision that about 44% of those such accidents with an instrumentation involved are due to the specification issues. So, the specification has to be very clear so that the design of installation team, commissioning team and as well as the maintenance team is the most uh, important. They are very clear to do the proper installation and further maintenance as well as operation team to identify and uh, mark wherever the hazards are there. So, this has to be clearly mentioned. Otherwise, you now the probability of the accidents or probability of hazards not being pro properly mitigated getting increased. Having a poorly or ill-defined or vaguely structured specification will lead to increased risk since the SIS design may not meet its intended safety targets. So, why safety systems are involved? These are involved, these are being built in the facility, process facility, which is handling a lot of hydrocarbons, a lot of chemicals and uh, flammable material in, in the process industries like refineries, oil and gas plants, chemical plants, power plants, etc. So, they are installed to 
overcome any assets happening so anywhere the design shall be very properly done so that the chances of assets getting will be avoided therefore for the sys there shall be no room for misinterpretation and all information in srs to be clear and specific to meet safety requirements so this what time and again is mentioned all the specification on the installation details the validation and the verification commissioning information everything to be detailed very clearly so that no ambiguity or no mistake is being done during the engineering stage design stage and the commissioning stage and further it is maintained as per the standards requirement so because uh, we are seeing about the requirements of the safety system which means it is protecting the people plant equipments and environment around the project area so every specification and every points needs to be taken care thoroughly to overcome to avoid any mistakes and to mitigate any asset scenario if at all happening in the plant thank you very much